Now case seven, we've got... 60-year-old male with a rapidly growing 3-centimeter shoulder lesion. All these red bundles here are skeletal muscle. And then in between the skeletal muscle is something else, right? Spindle cells. Yeah. Maybe a slight bit of bluish myxoidy backgrounds. Yeah. This pattern is very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. That the the um, spindle cells are kind of filling in the spaces between the muscle bundles, mm -hmm. and they're actually splaying apart the individual muscle fibers, right? Yeah. It's kind of a weird, weird thing. Let's go a little closer. Some area cells get like wrapped in the bundle. Ah. I think I know what you're talking about, like in uh, these areas. Yeah. So here, in the midst of the skeletal muscle cells, in the background here, we've got these cells that have abundant eosinophilic to purple kind of amphiphilic cytoplasm, large round nuclei, a big central nucleoli, and they do have kind of a rhabdoid appearance, which is scary, right? Mm -hmm. And if we look around, there probably are mitoses in here. What about these cells here? What does this, these cells kind of look like? Which one? The, this area, this kind of loose, a bit hypocellular. Yeah. Kind of spindly to stellate cells. If you ignore those big, huge cells floating around in here, I think this background looks kind of mixoid. I think it kind of looks like nausea fasciitis yeah, a little does. bit. Yeah. There's extravasated red cells. So to me, that's the trick with recognizing this, is that if you can look away from the big eyeball-looking cells staring up at you, which are admittedly very scary, the background looks to me like myofibroblasts with a purple mm. cytoplasm, spindle to stellate, kind of hypocellular in a mixoid background, extravasated red cells. This is actually a form of fasciitis. This is called proliferative fasciitis. Oh, wow. And it is a very scary-looking yeah. um, process. And one that has caused many people to, to overdiagnose it as a sarcoma. In fact, early in my career, I actually called a case that I thought was sarcoma. And it was just a really robust case of proliferative fasciitis where all of those big ganglion-like cells, that's what we call those big cells that look kind of rhabdoid, they were all packed closely together. And it wasn't in the muscle, it was in the subcutis. So I didn't have this clue to go on. So the one clue is that the cells, if you ignore the ganglion-like cells, everything else kind of has a fasciitis look. It's hypocellular, usually. There are exceptions, like that case I mentioned that I had trouble with early in my career, and thankfully nothing bad happened to the patient, and it was a good learning lesson, um, but it was, a, it was a little scary. And, um, and that was after I had done a soft tissue fellowship. So I still struggle, and I thought about <laughs> proliferative fasciitis, but I thought just too much. And particularly in kids, when kids get proliferative fasciitis or proliferative myositis, is the same thing. We just use a different name. If it's centered in the subcutis, we call it proliferative fasciitis. If it splays apart muscle like this, we say proliferative myositis. But the, um, in kids, there's a form that is very cellular and has a bunch of those ganglion-like cells, and that is pretty scary looking, for sure. Very scary looking. So, um, but this, this pattern from low power is so key. The proliferative fascia or myositis, when it's in the muscle, it splays apart each individual skeletal muscle fiber and, in, and the whole groups of fibers. And that is a, an uncommon pattern for sarcomas to do. Sarcomas, high-grade sarcomas, usually grow rapidly and push everything out of the way. They make like a big ball of tumor and have actually smooth, not infiltrative borders with a few exceptions. One of the most notable exceptions would be myxofibrosarcoma. Myxofibrosarcomas can look a bit like this. They have a myxoid background, just like the fasciitis does. They infiltrate between muscle, just like this does. Although I would say that they might do this focally, but the, the fact that every single muscle here is splayed apart perfectly, that's very characteristic of, of uh, proliferative uh, myositis. And um, in fact, this, this, if I recall this case, this was actually one of the flat muscles on like the forearm of an older patient. And the whole muscle was completely replaced on imaging. And that actually in flat, thin muscles, that's a characteristic feature. And the radiologist knew. They said, oh, this is going to be proliferative. Or they knew it was going to be myositis because it's like the whole muscle gets replaced. The other thing that helps is there is, this is the, this is the whole lesion. There is no like central mass. Like most sarcomas, even if they infiltrate, they'll have a central area that's tumor, definitely. And then at the edges, they'll trickle out like a myxofibrous sarcoma. But here there is no like center, right? The whole thing is like a patchy quilt, like a quilt of weird splayed apart muscle and fasciitis and weird muscle and fasciitis all 
patched together, right? So I find that it's kind of some people call this a checkerboard pattern. Um, so it's kind of this checkerboard pattern and the way the muscle splays apart from low power, super helpful. At higher power, you'll see stuff that looks like fasciitis, which is why studying what reactive myofibroblasts and nodular fasciitis, again, both of which look very similar, studying what myofibroblastic things look like is so important because it will help you to recognize this looks kind of reactive fasciitis-like in appearance. And then once you see the big, big, huge cells with the big nucleoli, that is, that's what makes this proliferative myositis, is the presence of many of these ganglion-like cells, which are probably just weird, reactive-looking, um, a weird pattern of myofibroblast. But those cells are the, the typical cells of this. So yeah, if, you, if you're not seen this before, and even if you have seen it before, it is a scary-looking uh, process. And you can see those ganglion-like cells occasionally in regular nodular fasciitis, just a few of them. And you can see it in other things like myositis ossificans sometimes. So it's a good, really good thing to know about and um, be aware of because it's real easy to get tricked. Let me go find there. That's the good area so that we can have a nice close-up view, see the ganglion-like cells. They're real prominent nucleoli. And like you said, I like your description. They really do have kind of a rhabdoid look, a centric nucleus and abundant kind of purple cytoplasm here. But those are the ganglion-like cells of proliferative myositis and again if it was not in the muscle we'd say proliferative fasciitis so that's a really good thing to know about very tricky uh tricky case that is uh, challenging and benign okay so all of the weird benign things that can look malignant those are all good things for us to learn about because they're pitfalls that are really easy to, to fall into in practice and sometimes you'll see some myxoid cystic degeneration and little little focal breakdown just like you would in nodular fasciitis. And here's more a pocket of those ganglion-like cells. And that's the other thing that helps me is the hypocellularity. Um, you know, the fact that the cells are kind of spaced out. Most sarcomas, the cells are packed close. Again, an exception can be some some forms of myxofibrous sarcoma. The cells can be floating around in a myxoid background, and those cases can be quite challenging. So.